All right. So as I mentioned, Ecobees is a Canadian company. And then in 2009, we introduced the very first Wi-Fi enabled thermostat. Now, in 2012, when we looked there, we introduced what's called the Home IQ. It's a free reporting feature that's available to all Ecobee homeowners. At the time, it was the first of its kind. Um, more have come out that have, have mimicked it and, and offer a similar type of um, option. But I'll be, be sure to go through that in detail and, and tell you what where the customers see value from that program. In 2014, that's when we introduced the biggest tool that we have in the box. It's not the biggest by size for those of you that have used one, but it is definitely the biggest by value, and that is that wireless room sensor. So I'm going to spend a, a good portion of that features and benefits um, aspect of the training really speaking to how those sensors can play a role in the home, both to improve comfort, energy savings, and even some small um, benefits to the home automation side of it as well. In 2017, we worked with Amazon to build Alexa voice services right into our Ecobee 4 and now the new Ecobee Smart Thermostat with voice control or Ecobee 5, as a lot of people refer to it as. In 2018, we introduced a thermostat management software called Smart Buildings, really focused on the commercial and multifamily space, um, but a, a really powerful platform. So I'll, I'll be sure to go through that in some detail. And then 2020, Last year, we introduced multi-speed fan control, which was a really exciting step for us. Um, in the high-rise market, there aren't many Wi-Fi thermostats that are compatible, but Ecobean has now become another option. And I'll explain what was limiting us in the past and what has now made us compatible with high-rise equipment like PTAX, fan coil units, and, and uh, certain heat, heat pumps as well. Now, with that said, when we're creating our products at Ecobee, we really build them around these six pillars. Um, and that's what we refer to these as, the six pillars. So the first is, is stunning design. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. We want to complement all the time, money, and effort that homeowners are putting into their home, especially over the last year, year and a half. And we think our black, sleek, modern look does do that. Um, second pillar there is ease of use. And I would say the biggest thing that we do to make them easy to use is we mimic technology that I'm sure most of you are com very comfortable with, and I'm sure most of our customers are very comfortable with, and that is of a smartphone, right? Uh, for those, again, for those of you that have used Ecobee, I'm sure you can agree, uh, it's very reminiscent to a smartphone, touchscreen display, 3.5 inch, um, and it's all menu driven, where you select that main menu and all your options are there. Third pillar down is control on the go. It's standard for Wi-Fi thermostats. Um, it's literally the reason we came out with the technology. Our CEO had a vision to manage his energy usage, but also make sure that the comfort was thought of as well uh, when he was not in the home and when he was going to different locations. Um, and that's how the, the company was born. Enhanced comfort. Comfort, energy savings, we're going to save those two for later because they are mo the most important. And then the last one is reliability. So for me, reliability is twofold. Number one, we have less than a 2% return rate on all of our thermostats. And even from those thermostats that do come back, we test them all and only um, about 0.1 to 0.2% of the thermostats have actually failed. Um, so it is one of the lowest failure rates in the industry. And we, we do pride ourselves on, on that aspect in al alone because we want to make sure that you're not having to... Um, you know, go for callbacks, replace thermostats on a regular occasion. So that said, if it doesn't work, because, you know, it, it will, it can, of course, happen. So if it does, if one doesn't work for you, really easy warranty process for um, the contractors on the line. Just go back into Desco, doesn't necessarily have to be the same branch, swap it out over the counter, and then the, their team handles everything for you. Really easy on your end. So uh, that's number one for reliability. The second piece to reliability is in regards to our requirement for a common wire. Uh, and because we know that most homes in North America only have four wires available today, we put what is called a power extender kit in every box. It's an add a wire uh, that makes a common connection without you having to run another wire. I'll be sure to go into that in a little bit more detail as we go through the presentation. But it, we see that as an aspect of reliability because we're not looking for to rely on batteries, which aren't great for the environment. And we're also not relying on technologies like power stealing, where we're getting the uh, we're stealing power from the equipment 
which can uh, lead to certain issues when it's really hot or really cold outside and the equipment has to work hard. Now, to uh, move away from those pillars and, and keep those in mind as we go through the presentation, because I will reference them continuously, but as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to spend a lot of time speaking about these room sensors, at least in the first portion of the training here. And and right here is is where the room sensors came into play or why we came out with the technology. Um, so the, what you're seeing is um, a little bit of a problem that exists in the industry today. But before I go into really what that problem is, I, I want to give you some background on how we we found it. So when we look at how homeowners see the success of their HVAC systems, they pretty much associate it down to how comfortable they are for the most part. Whether that's the right way for them to think about it or not, um, that's a whole nother conversation, but that's primarily how they think about it. So for us to ensure that the homeowners and our, our, our feel like they had a great experience from our professional partners, we wanted to find a way to improve the comfort in the home for you. So when we looked into how to do that, we realized that there's a problem in the industry. And the problem all stems from the fact that there are thermostats located in central areas of homes, dining rooms, hallways, etc. And they do a good job of understanding temperatures in that immediate space, but not a great job of understanding temperatures across the entire home, which is why you get hot and cold spots in, in certain areas. For me, it's in my bedroom with the large windows or um, over the garage. So what we said is rather than take, taking the temperature at that central location as a thermostat, let's create these affordable wireless room sensors, which we can now place around the home to get a better understanding of when to call for heating and cooling across that entire space rather than that one centralized location. Now, before I go into how these sensors work, how they help save money, how they help to improve comfort, I want to give everybody a little bit of background so that we know what's going on and, and how they, they function. So with that said, um, although all of our thermostats are Wi-Fi enabled, these sensors are not. They rely on a, um, a radio frequency. It's a 915 megahertz signal. I don't necessarily think that that's important to remember. But what I do think is important to remember is that it's not operating on Wi-Fi. The reason it's not operating on Wi-Fi is because um, if you had the maximum number of thermostats or sensors paired to a thermostat and they were all operating on Wi-Fi, 32 is the maximum, then it's going to slow down the customer's network and also increase their data costs, two things we don't want to do for them. It also eliminates that issue of if the internet drops off what happens. So these will communicate without Wi-Fi using that radio frequency. Um, as going down the list here, we have an improved battery life of five years. It was about two to three years on the last version of the sensors. We've improved the connection range by about 10 feet, going from 40 to 50. On the connection range specifically, um, 50 foot is the spec, and I would definitely say respect that spec, but we have seen on a number of occasions where that range is stretched and pushed to somewhere around the 80 feet range. That said, when you do start stretching the range outside of 50 feet, that's when interferences can become more likely. Um, but with, if you're staying within that 50 feet, uh, you should not in encounter interference issues in regards to the thermostat to sensor communication. And then to, to the last point on the screen here, fully backwards compatible, um, because of this point, it makes the, therm the sensors a great upsell opportunity. So for example, let's say you go into a, a customer's house tomorrow, um, they, you see that they have an Ecobee, regardless of the model that it is, any of our black residential thermostats, you can say to them, look, Mr. And Mrs. Homeowner, do you have any hot and cold spots? If you, <clears throat> if you do, excuse me, why not try a couple of these sensors? It's about a hundred dollars for two, nothing crazy. And, uh, you get to address those, those certain concerns in your house. Even if you have a customer that wants to upgrade the actual thermostat, but keep some of their older sensors, you can do that because they're fully backwards and forwards compatible. And then lastly, right up on the top of the screen here, we have advanced occupancy detection. And I'm sure everyone's wondering what exactly that means. Um, so what it does mean is how these room, how these sensors detect occupancy. Um, 
because they double as both temperature and occupancy sensors. So for Ecobee, occupancy works in two ways. The first is motion, and the second is infrared. They actually happen at the same time, but there's those two different components. Motion's quite simple, right? Looking for movement, and infrared's looking for body temperature. The reason we've included that is to ensure that we can still pick up on people if they're not moving in their house. So you're sleeping, you're watching TV, you're doing work at a desk. Uh, these sensors will still pick you up if you, um, even if you're not moving. Anyway, now that you have that background on the sensors, when you get these sensors, there's two ways that they can come. Number one is they can come in the box with the thermostat. If that's how they come, their pairing process is extremely easy. It's going to ask you during the installation, do I want to pair my smart sensor now or later? You're going to select whichever you prefer. If you select now, it's going to just ask you to pull out the tab on the back to engage the battery, give the sensor a name, and you're done. But if they're sold separately, sorry, if, if they're sold separately from that thermostat, so they're sold in two packs, then there's a different pairing process where you actually have to use the customer's mobile app to pair the sensor to the thermostat. It's not complicated, but it is an added step. And the reason that we've added that added step is because um, for security purposes. For sake of timing, because we have an hour here, uh, I'm not going to go through that pairing process with the sensors, but I can send some follow-up information on it just to make sure everybody's feeling comfortable with that aspect there. Now, once you walk through that pairing process, whether it's the one that comes with the stat or the one that's sold separately, what's going to happen is the sensors are going to default into the first of three settings, which is called averaging. Before I go into averaging, does anybody have any questions at the moment? Okay, great. Um, so with averaging, what it's designed to do is to try to make everybody in the home as equally comfortable at the same time. Now, I'm, I'm going to put a, a, a caveat in right at the beginning. For this entire slide and, 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 and the discussion around how the sensors improve comfort, we're not zoning, right? So we're, we're, we're not... Um, implementing dampers we're not implementing a zone system this is a, a, an affordable solution that customers can look at to an as an alternative to zoning for a much much more affordable cost so with averaging what it's going to do is it's going to try to get each of my room sensors to set point without overshooting one another and then the average of all those sensors will be my set point so for example in my house um, I think a, a personal example is really the best way to understand this. So in my house, I have a, a sensor on the, on the, in my brother's room, excuse me, because it's a hot or a cold spot depending on the time of the year. And then I have a thermostat on the main floor. With my setup, my set point is 22 degrees. What averaging is going to do is knowing that my brother's room is a hot spot, let's say, it's going to get his room to about 23 and at the same time, it's going to drop that main floor to about 21. And then therefore, the average between those two locations is my set point of 22 degrees. So as you can see with averaging, it's, it's not perfect. We're never going to be able to completely eliminate the temperature. So what we are going to do is be able to take a little comfortable. So for me and my house and my family, um, it did. It brought my brother's room up a degree. So rather than his room being two degrees off set point, it was only a degree off set point. But at the same time, now on the other end of the, the hallway upstairs in my sister's room, um, it's now a degree off set point. So it is a little bit of a balancing act, but the idea is to try to make everybody in the home comfortable at the same time. So that's averaging. That's the setting it's going to default into as soon as you connect one thermostat or one sensor to a thermostat. Probably our most popular setting because it's the default. Then right underneath it, we have a setting called follow me. So it's almost like a good, better, best scenario. Um, so with follow me, we're, we're at our better setting. And what follow me does that's unique compared to averaging is with averaging, we're strictly looking for a temperature reading at each sensor, right? Um, but with follow me, we're looking for both the temperature reading and an occupancy reading. We already talked about how occupancy works on that last slide with the motion and the infrared. So using that technology there, 
these sensors can literally follow you around the house and prioritize comfort in the rooms that are being used. So again, I'm, I'm going to give you an example in my house here. Um, this is the last example of my house and I'll stop talking about my house, but, um, Again, similar, same setup, sensor in the brother, my brother's room, stat on that main floor. Let's say um, today I wasn't doing this from home. We were doing it at Desco's head office, which we all wish we could be doing. And then I came home and I started cooking a, a little bit of a late dinner. As I'm cooking dinner, the thermostat the, that's on the main floor is going to realize that I'm there through the occupancy sensor and say, okay, I see somebody on this main floor, but I don't see anybody in the rest of the house. Let's strictly focus on bringing this main floor up to set point. I don't care right now if it's getting a little bit hotter in the bedroom or cooler in the basement as this main floor is coming up to set point because there's nobody else home and the main floor is the only occupied area. With that said, when my brother comes home and runs up to his bedroom, it's now got to average, right? Because he's in his bedroom. I'm on that main floor. It has to try to make us both comfortable. So it reverts back to the averaging mode. Then only at the end of the night, once I've cooked, cleaned and, and done everything I needed to do on the main floor, by the way, all with the help uh, or without the help of my brother, he's still not there. He's not willing to do it yet. Um, but at the end of the night, when I go to the bedroom and my brother is still in his room, it's going to go back into call me mode because he's upstairs. I'm upstairs. There's no one else in the rest of the house. So we're really focused on the and we're so we got averaging which is good we have follow me which is better and then we call our best setting participation which is alluded to in the bottom left corner here now with participation um we call it our best setting because it's the best way to improve comfort in a specific room or in a specific area of the house so what do i mean by that what participation allows you to do is manually turn on and off different sensors. So rather than using my house as an example here, let's use this house on screen so we can get some visuals. Um, with participation mode, let's say this kid that's in his room um, as he's playing with his toy airplane, the parents want to guarantee that this room is at set point. What they can do to do that is turn off the sensor that's built into the thermostat turn off the sensor that's built that's in their bedroom and then strictly allow this sensor that's in the kids room to be the only one on the only place that it's calling for heating and cooling and then therefore guaranteeing that this room is going to be at set point again we're not zoning here right so as the kids room is getting a little bit more comfortable the parents might be moving a degree or two away from their set point but that's, they're okay with that because they're making a conscious decision to say, I want to focus on the kids' room while they're playing with their toy. Now, that's really how participation is used to improve comfort in a specific room. Another great example would be like a home office, right, where you're spending 8 to 10 hours during the day there, but at night you're not spending so much time. Uh, um, really handy in situations like that. But it could also be a massive help on the install specifically in situations where you run into some wiring challenges you can't run wires you don't want to run wires or maybe it's even a rental property and the the owner of the property doesn't want the tenant to have access to the thermostat in any of those situations what you can do is you can use participation mode to turn off the sensor that's been built into the thermostat itself once you turn off that sensor in the thermostat taking it away as an active temperature reader um, you, you now have the ability to install that thermostat anywhere you want. For example, in the mechanical room is the most popular area because it's nice and easy to run the wires to. But I've seen it installed in closets um, behind certain furniture to hide it. So you have plenty of, op uh, of options. Once you install it in that mechanical room, you can then throw three, four of those sensors around the home to communicate back down to that thermostat that's in the mechanical room. And the best part about it is the customer doesn't have to sacrifice on their experience with a Wi-Fi thermostat because they can just control it all off their phone or, or a computer, of course. So um, a really nice workaround for all of you to get around those wiring issues and still a great experience for the customer. Before I move on and away from uh, how these sensors improve comfort, 
Does anybody have any questions about the three settings we just went through? Averaging, follow me, participation. Okay. Um, if you do, feel free to, again, you can use the, the chat. I'll write chat here. So you can use that to ask questions as well. You don't have to unmute yourself. You have a couple options there. Um, but to get back to it, those three settings we just went through, as I mentioned, they are really focused on how we can improve comfort, not so much on the energy savings. But as I had referred to in the beginning, energy savings is just as important to Ecobee. Um, so where that comes into play is when we start running a schedule. Uh, schedule with Ecobee is, is pretty straightforward. Uh, we have a home, sleep, and an away mode. And the efficiencies are going to be starting to build up in the away and in the sleep mode when we're setting back the temperature by a degree uh, and a half to two degrees out of the box. You can customize and change that set point to whatever you would like, um, but it is about a degree and a half to two degrees out of the box. For those of you that are using Ecobee, other Wi-Fi thermostats, or even programmable thermostats, you're going to be pretty comfortable with the schedule. Um, I like to just mention one quick thing on it that I like, uh, and that is that the Ecobees come with a pre-programmed schedule built into it. Hands down, what takes the longest on an install of a Wi-Fi thermostat is creating a custom schedule with the, the, the customer. So by Ecobee having a pre-programmed schedule, not only is it going to guarantee that the customer is seeing some level of energy savings because there's a pre-programmed sleep mode in there, it's 6.30 in the morning home, 11.30 p.m. sleep. Um, so they'll start building efficiencies up there. But the other great aspect to it is it helps you and your technicians move on to the next job a lot quicker. I think there's an opportunity to say, look, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, here is your thermostat. We've pre-programmed the schedule into it. If you want to customize it, feel free to give it a shot yourself. There are a ton of YouTube videos from, from Ecobee that help you create that schedule. But if you need some assistance, here's Ecobee's tech support number. Give them a call and allow them to help you out. And this is what I meant by our team can play a role in your day-to-day -day business. We have about 150 to 200 techs on the line until midnight during the week and 10 p.m. on the weekend. So they're really there pretty much the whole always to support. And the best part about it is they can look into the back end of the thermostat and actually make some small tweaks and changes for the customer if they get their approval to do so. So again, I think it's a role that our, our quite large tech support team can help support you day to day. So schedule is the first way we start saving some money with the setback in the away and in the sleep mode. Outside of that, we have a setting called smart home, smart away, which is used to actually override your schedule based on the home being occupied or not. So it's, it's in short, occupancy-based heating and cooling control. And because that occupancy aspect is involved, we obviously uh, need the sensors to, to have this setting enabled. So as an example, let's say my smart home mode is turned on. What it's going to do is it's going to look at the thermostat schedule and say, okay, even though the schedule says that the family should be away right now, I realize that they're home through these sensors let's automatically shift them into their home portion of the schedule to get them back to set point and make sure that they're comfortable. And then smart away is going to do the complete opposite. It's going to look at your schedule and say, okay, even though the family says that they should be um, home right now, I haven't seen anybody home for two hours. That's the, the default threshold, two hours. Let's automatically set back the temperature. So we start saving the customer some money. Now, one more quick point on Smart Home, Smart Away. That setback that I just referenced when it goes into Smart Away mode is a learning algorithm of our thermostat. So in month one, we're going to be really conservative and only set back the temperature by like, I don't know, half a degree, for example. And the reason we're only going to set it back half a degree is because we, can, we know we can get back to set point within 30 minutes of somebody coming home. Then maybe in month three or four, once we've learned the home dynamics, we say, hey, no, you know what? We can actually set back the temperature a full degree and a half and still recover to set point within 30 minutes of somebody coming home. So it sets back after two hours of, un un of an unoccupied state. 
and then it's only setting back the temperature so far that it can recover within 30 minutes of somebody coming home. So a really handy feature for the customers and it's uh, set it and forget it as well. Now those two features as, as well as a, a couple of other learning algorithms that are built into the thermostat, they're saving our customers about 23% on their annual heating and cooling costs. And that is compared to a 22 degree hold. The reason it's compared to 22 degree hold is because about 80% of programmable thermostats aren't actually programmed. So we use that as a benchmark for this report here, which is pretty much an industry standard, meaning that the thermostat can, depending on how the customer uses it, pay for itself in about a year and a half to two years. Now, in addition to those settings that we just went through, we've also launched this program called Eco Plus. Um, it's an enhanced energy savings program that now comes with all the Ecobee thermostats. For those of you that are installing Ecobees today and haven't seen this, the reason you haven't seen it is because it takes about a month or so to kick in. Because again, it needs to learn the home dynamics before it can start saving that customer some money. So you, you'll never see this on the installation process. Um, so that's why it might look new to you. I'm not going to go into too much detail on Eco Plus, again, just for timing's sake, because it is very homeowner facing. The whole idea with Eco Plus is for them to log into it, um, turn it on, and then play around with it. Slide that bar from left to right and try to achieve a little bit more energy savings without sacrificing on their comfort too, too much. Um, that said, I'm just going to very quickly go over the five settings in here. I'm not going to explain them really. I'm just going to go over the five settings. And then uh, I'll send a follow-up email with a package that explains both. So the five settings that are in here is a humidity optimization setting called Feels Like. You have an enhanced smart home, smart away, which allows you to customize the time in which it sets back. You have um, a learning your schedule feature, which will learn your schedule and send you an email just with suggestions on how you can change it. It's never going to change anything for you. And then the last two settings are energy demand response and time of use. Both of those have to do with partnerships that we have with utility where we're aligning time of use rates to the usage of your HVAC equipment. And then we can run HVAC equipment when it's less expensive to, to, to use electricity versus more expensive. Um, so all really exciting features. They're saving our customers an additional 6% on average when using this program. Um, so just keep an eye out for that, that uh, attachment that I'm going to send up as send out as a, a follow-up and let me know if you have any questions on Eco Plus specifically. Like it says up at the top there, we really do give the homeowner the ability to control and monitor these thermostats from anywhere at any time, whether you're on the phone, computer, tablet, or um, watch wearable products as well. I'd just like to make two quick points on this screen. Um, the first one is that there are specific settings available for specific devices. And what those settings are is number one, installation settings. We're talking about dissipation times, heating, uh, minimum and maximum run times, staging options, um, so on and so forth. Those types of settings are only available at the thermostat. And the reason we've done that is because we know if it was on their phone, um, you know, the customer would be having a glass of wine on, on a Thursday night watching the Leafs and the Habs and uh, go into the thresholds and potentially break something. And then one of you are getting a call on Friday or Saturday morning, which I know nobody really wants. Um, so installation settings, thermostat only. And then the one thing that's available on the large screens only is that home IQ portal that I had referenced earlier. Before I get into Home IQ, actually, um, let me just go back here. Just to call out the, the consistent user interface, you can ignore the watch because we've actually changed the way that it looks um, to align it more like this. But you can see the face of the thermostat is right on the phone. The face of the thermostat is right on the uh, tablet here. And if you saw, saw the thermostat itself, it would look the exact same. So very easy for customers to navigate device to device. Anyway, to go back to Home IQ, um, Actually, before I do this, let me pause. Does anybody have any questions about any of the energy savings items we just talked about? Scheduling, Smart Home, Smart Away, the Energy Star rating, Eco Plus. 
Anything there? Okay, perfect. Whoops. Okay, so to get back to Home IQ, like I was saying, it's a free reporting feature available to all Ecobee homeowners 24 seven through their web portal. So again, large screens only. Um, now, I, again, just like Eco Plus, I don't wanna go into too, too much detail on this because it's very homeowner facing, but I do wanna shed some light on how homeowners use this and where they see value in it. So I'd say that the two biggest areas of value are, the, are um, number one, helping them understand the impact that Ecobee is making in their home. And number two, um, it, it's giving them some peace of mind. So in regards to the impact that, that it's making, the Eagle Bee provides about three or four reports strictly around savings. So it'll tell the customer how many dollars and cents they've saved since they started using Eagle Bee. It'll tell them the amount of equipment runtime hours that they've saved since they've started using Eagle Bee. And it'll even tell them um, or give them a comparison to the average Eagle Bee user in their city and town in terms of energy usage. usage. Uh, it's always a fun one to see where you stack up against your neighbors. Um, it is just an average though. So you're not going to see anybody's specific energy usage. Um, so that's really the, the understanding, the impact side of it. And then it also gives them some peace of mind. As you may or may not know, <coughs> excuse me, the Ecobee thermostats do send out alerts. They send out reminders and alerts around different things, high temperature, low humidity, um, in, um, inefficient run times, et cetera. So, when customers get those alerts, sometimes they can panic and, and they can be thrown off. So what I, I think this portal allows them to do is log into it and say, rather than panicking and calling my contractor, let me look at my portal here and make sure that my AC or furnace isn't running. If it isn't running, then I need to call my contractor. If it is, then maybe my son or my daughter left the door open for the last couple hours or the window. And that's why it's hotter or colder in my house. So Again, peace of mind and helping them understand the impact that Ecovee is making in their home. As another option, um, if your customers are interested in it, I've seen a number of, of uh, a number of partners actually get access to their customers' portal, so they can add you as a separate user, and then you can log in and monitor their um, their reports like this as well. Just something to think, think about as, a, as an option for those customers that want a little bit more of that hands-on experience. So as a quick review, we've gone through three of my four key selling points or key pillars. Um, the first is how we can improve comfort with averaging follow me participation. The second is how we can save the homeowner some money through using a schedule smart home smart away and even that eco plus program that i uh, talked about and the third was the remote remote and monitoring capabilities whether that's the homeowner using home iq or one of you taking advantage of that as well also i should mention um we are going to be coming out with a, a program called a pro pin program where your your company is going to get a six digit pin which you can input on the thermostat and it'll save you as their as their preferred contractor um, it's not launched yet. It's going to be launched closer to June 30th. So just keep an eye out for that. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions about that program, but just something else to make you aware of. Now, to get into the fourth selling point or the fourth pillar, we're going to talk about the smart home. I really like to spend a little bit of time on this because it's not an area of focus for all of us being HVAC professionals. Um, but it's a big, big reason why people are going with Ecovee. So before I get into specifics on how Ecobee plays in the smart home, uh, let me give you a little bit of background on why we went into this space. So the first reason is quite simple. It makes sense from a dollars and cents perspective because there's a lot of opportunity in the market. Um, they're predicting that by 2026, the smart home market in particular, is gonna in North America is gonna be about a hundred billion dollar business. So just tons of opportunity to go after. In addition to that, 
the smart thermostat presents a really unique opportunity because about 35, 30, 35% of the time, the smart thermostat is the very first smart device in the home. So knowing that it's in there so early, we saw that as an opportunity. We saw that as an opportunity to build a voice assistant with Alexa into the thermostat based on the fact that number one, it's in there early. So the customer doesn't have to go out and buy a secondary device like an, a, a Google Home or an Alexa uh, Echo. They don't have to do that. Also, the thermostat's typically located in a central area of the house where it can hear people's voices from most areas, um, which makes it a perfect location for a smart home hub. And that's exactly what Ecobee will be. You can speak to that thermostat, not only to control your heating and cooling and the thermostat controls, but to control all your other smart home products in your life, uh, your house, turning on your lights, maybe it's cameras, door locks, um, garage door openers, TVs, anything that's going to be compatible with Alexa, you can now speak to your, your Ecobee and ask Alexa to control those secondary devices. Now, when it comes to the smart home, this is an area that Ecobee feels we have a little bit of a competitive advantage. And the reason we feel that way is due to the flexibility of our integrations. Um, you can see on screen here, we have all of the major players when it comes to voice assistance that we have the capability to integrate with, whether it's Alexa being built in, Google, Apple, where you can use Siri to control it, Samsung smart things, and then IFTTT, which is a uh, a free feature, a free program. It's, it's pretty interesting if ever, anybody wants to look at it. It allows you to create automation rules um, for free. Anyway, um, because of the flexibility here, we're allowing our customers to just pick their favorite brand and run with it, whereas some of our competitors have locked themselves into one, maybe two ecosystem, and they say, we only work with these products. Now, before I move on to this or from the smart home, um, I usually tell a story about Tim Cook, who's Apple CEO, and he has this really sophisticated smart home and he uses his Apple HomeKit integration to wake up his house and, and close his house down pretty much where it's turning on lights, cameras, door locks, TVs, coffee makers and all these different devices. For our customer group, where they don't have, you know, 10, 15 devices, I, I don't know if that's the most realistic story. So just to give you an example, I'll, I'll, I'll share some, I'll share my personal experience. So I don't have a, a very complex smart home. I have a smart thermostat with a voice control, obviously Alexa built into it. I have um, one smart plug with a lamp plugged into it and a smart TV. Even with that very basic setup, I can speak to my thermostat and say, Alexa, it's movie time. And when I say that, my smart TV turns on and it automatically goes to Netflix. And my uh, smart plug that has the lamp, the lamp plugged into it automatically turns, it turns that off. And my thermostat drops one degree in temperature so I can use a blanket. Um, so even with a very basic setup like that, only three devices, you can get some very helpful and um, really cool benefits from it. Now, last piece here in regards to Alexa specifically, Ecobee is the first party device, first third party device, excuse me, in the world to match proprietary Amazon functionality. So everything we can do on our thermostat, they can do on their devices and vice versa. Um, for me personally, I like I'm where I'm controlling some other smart devices. I also in tons of alarms when I'm waking up, when I'm cooking. Um, it's also great for a shopping list. Like if you're cooking in your kitchen, let's say, and you run out of onion or cereal or whatever it is, you can say, Alexa, add cereal to my shopping list, and it saves a shopping list on your phone. And then there's also the entertainment aspects of it, right? The music, the radio, the games that are great for kids. Um, I have a couple of younger cousins who love playing like memory games and matching games, asking it to make animal sounds. So just a ton of flexibility with this. Um, there's 50,000 different skills or, or applications that you can use with Amazon Alexa. 
Any questions on the smart home side of things? Again, I know it's not something we spend our time on talking about every single day, but big reason why people are going with Ecobee. So does anybody have any questions, whether it's stuff I covered or maybe it's something that I missed that you're wondering? Okay, great. Then... With that said, um, we can go over to specs now. So what we're looking at on screen is the Ecobee smart thermostat with voice control. Um, you can see at the top of the screen, we have the staging options. You have two heat, two cool, and four heat, two cool with your heat pumps. Um, I should have mentioned this, this at the beginning, but people are also referred to this thermostat as the Ecobee 5, but the true name to it is Ecobee smart thermostat with voice control. In addition to the staging options where dual fuel is possible with a heat pump, you also have the accessory control. So this thermostat can control one accessory and what those accessories are is one of an HRV, an ERV, a humidifier, a dehumidifier, or um, yeah, those are the four. And then there's also a ventilator if you have um, economizers in rooftops for commercial jobs, this thermostat can enable free cooling through that economizer as well. Has a five-year warranty on this model, and that's the biggest way that we differentiate from retail, where they get a three-year warranty. And then on top of that, obviously more competitive price point on the, the pro side. Has Amazon Alexa built into it, and then comes with one of these wireless room sensors in the box, as we know. In regards to the internal components, you can see you got the microphone on the top and then the speaker on the bottom. By having those in the thermostat, you can do things like hands-free calling with Alexa, where you sync your phone list to your Alexa account, and you can actually ask it to make phone calls for you. Um, there's a Spotify integration now, so you can ask Amazon Music or Spotify, and then there's also Bluetooth. So if you want to connect this thermostat to larger speakers around your home, you can do that for more of a, a home, whole home sound type approach. Then you have the Ecobee 3 Lite. Um, so the Ecobee 3 Lite is a, our value model, if you will. It's about $100 less expensive than the Ecobee Smart Thermostat with voice control. And there's really three, three and a half reasons for that uh, $100 difference. Before I get there, the similarities, you can see them in the staging options are the exact same. And in the warranty, it's the same as well, five years. Um, but those three, three and a half differences are as follows. Number one it has no Amazon Alexa built into it. It can still be controlled through separate Amazon devices, through separate Google devices, Apple, et cetera. It's just not built into it. Number two is um, the accessory control. It does not have the ability to control one of those accessories like an HRV or a humidifier. It's just standalone thermostat. Number three is the room sensor. It does not come with any of the room sensors in the box, but you can pair up to 32 of them per thermostat. They're just sold separately in two packs. And then the last one, that, that kind of half point that I mentioned, what that what I'm referring to there is the occupancy sensor on the face of the thermostat. Um, I know it's difficult to see, but there is an occupancy sensor right here. It's a, a little bit of a cutout. It looks like a, a kidney bean, bean kind of. And uh, whereas the Eagle V3 Lite does not have that occupancy sensor there. Um, so those are really the differences on what makes up that $100, $110, Really, customers that are interested in Wi-Fi thermostat but maybe don't need all the, the benefits of the smart home, this is a great thermostat option for them. It's also really popular in commercial spaces as well. Um, now, for those of you that are, are doing work in the high rise space, this is the equipment that Ecobee has become compatible with in the summer of 2020. We introduced um, three-speed fan control, which made us compatible with this type of equipment. So you can now run an Ecobee off a PTAC unit, PTAC with auxiliary heat, uh, two and four pipe fan coils with auxiliary heat and uh, auto changeover sensors on the two pipe if you have them, as well as high-rise heat pumps. And again, what's enabled that is the fan control. Uh, in the past, we could only run one fan speed, but now we have the ability to run three, low, medium, high, and optimize as well, which is just going to stage between the three of them based on what's required in that space. So a really exciting step for us. Um, if you do do work in the high-rise space, please reach out to me. 
Um, I'm happy to to work with you to help you understand projects that this might be a fit on. I'm happy to discuss this with consultants and engineers. So just uh, just let me know and I'm happy to help. And then the last thermostat we're going to go to is the commercial one, the Ecobee EMSSI. But before I get into it, I, I'm just going to ask, does anybody have any questions on the two residential models? Okay, perfect. Um, then on the Ecobee EMSSI, obviously quite different, um, quite a different look and feel, much more traditional looking. It does have a hard plastic screen instead of a glass screen, so less chances of it breaking, which, you know, being in commercial spaces is a little bit more robust. We want to make sure of that. Staging options are similar, and so is the warranty, but there's some slight differences. So conventional is the exact same. Heat pump, you have three heat to cool, um, so only one stage of auxiliary heat. And then you have a three-year warranty on this thermostat. The reason it's not a five-year is because uh, these thermostats are not sold in retail. They're only sold through our wholesale partners. Um, so there's no need to differentiate between the two using that uh, warranty. Then these last two points on my screen here are the two most important or the two that make it the most unique. What the first one is, is the sensors. So the, the Ecobee EMSSI does not work with any of the wire list sensors. What it does work it with is any type of type 2 10K ohm sensor or any type of dry contact sensor. Um, so just a multitude of options there. For a couple of examples, uh, temperature sensors, of course, window and door sensors, fridge and freezer sensors at restaurants, uh, slab sensors if you're doing hydronic heating in a custom home, for example, um, air, air, um, air differential switches. So just, just a multitude of options. And the great thing is about this, once you start including sensors with the Ecobee EMSSI, you can actually start creating automation rules in the thermostat. So for example, what one of our customers in Adidas does is they tie a door and window sensor to this thermostat and they set up an automation rule to say, every time that door and window sensor is open for longer than 10 minutes, automatically shut off the HVAC. So we're not was wasting the conditioned air out of that back door or out of those windows. So again, lots of flexibility there. And then the other thing that makes this thermostat unique to Ecobee is the requirement for our smart buildings subscription, that commercial thermostat management software. It's a requirement if you want Wi-Fi control on this commercial thermostat. And what that subscription gets you is access to this portal right here, the Ecobee smart buildings portal. Um, the cost for that subscription, I should mention that, uh, it's about $30 per year per thermostat. So it's $2.50 a month. That's our most expensive price point. And then we also have uh, um, on the lower end of our, our packages, we have $1.75 a month. So not crazy expensive for a property manager or a business operator. Um, but on the residential side, there is no subscription fee. It's really only on the, the commercial side. And again, this is what it gets you access to. It gets you access to a portal where you can upload an unlimited amount of thermostats in it across an unlimited amount of buildings. And because it's used for both commercial and multifamily segments, it works with all of our thermostats, not just the thermostat, the commercial one. It is required for the commercial model, but can be used with the residential models if you're trying to look to control a mass amount. Really, anything over 15 thermostats is going to require the commercial portal. And the way that you can really think of this portal is sort of like a light building automation where we're giving the customers a very easy to use platform where they, which they can use to manage their energy usage um, in commercial multifamily spaces. And as we all know, HVAC attributes to the by far the most energy usage in these types of buildings, which is why a solution to manage it is so vital. Being that it's a light building automation solution, it's a it's a great fit for those light commercial spaces like restaurants, churches, manufacturing facilities, um, gas stations, retail outlets, anywhere where there's um, rooftop units or even unit heaters, things like that. Ecobee has been has proven to be a great fit for that because it's designed not only to allow that customer to control one thermostat at a time, but to select, you know, 10, 15, 20, 100, 1,000 at once 
and start doing things like standardizing the HVAC schedule. So maybe it's running based on when the building's actually occupied versus 24-7 holds. It's going to allow them to manage their assets remotely and extend the lifetime of their access assets by limiting the runtime to when it needs to be, not just whenever the employees or the tenant wants it to be. They're going to have the ability to set passcodes, temperature limits, um, and different types of smart settings or energy efficiency settings to drive that return on the investment, which our customers are seeing in about a year, year and a half, depending on the building. So with that smart buildings portal in particular, if you do have any customers that you think would be interested in it, I'm happy to, to speak with them directly, like in, in tandem with you, I should say, or directly, whatever you would prefer. Um, the Ecobee smart building subscription is managed between Ecobee and the end user, but the hardware would obviously be th flowing through um, all of you directly. So again, for smart buildings in particular, and really for Ecobee as a whole, please feel free to use me as a resource in the field or when you're speaking to customers. I'm, I'm more than happy to help. And uh, as it says on screen here, that's all, folks. Um, does anybody have any questions to, to round us off today? Thanks for the presentation, Rob. Really appreciate it. No problem, Fidel. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thanks a lot. No problem, Trey. Appreciate it. Um, anybody have any questions to end us off? Okay, beautiful. I'll, t I'll take... Oh, do we have one? Yeah, thanks there, Rob. Appreciate that. No problem. No problem. Okay. So, yeah, if we don't have any questions, guys, and, and everybody, thank you all very much for taking some time to join today. Um, I know everybody wants to probably go watch the game, so go enjoy it. I will be sending out a follow-up email uh, pretty much right now. Like I said, that quiz is going to be in there, so please take some time to do it. Um, if you can try to get it done before the weekend, that would be perfect, but we'll give you until, uh, I guess it's a long weekend. So if you can get it done before Tuesday at uh, 9 a.m., that would be great, as we want to get the winner of the thermostat as soon as possible. So thank you, everybody. Have a great night, and uh, you should receive a follow-up email from me shortly. And Desco team, thank you for helping me get it set up again. I think the series was a great success. Have a good night. Thanks for us, everybody. Goal Have a good night. Goal. Have suck. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Enjoy. Bye. Bye.